Hello everybody, today we are going to talk about what is, to me, the scariest series currently running on YouTube, and that is the Mandela Catalog. The Mandela Catalog comfortably finds itself in that space of analog horror that encompasses informational videos as well as personal recordings. Through a combination of creepy atmospherics and horrific visuals that have all been combined with this sort of VHS overlay, the series does a great job at not only providing scares, but as we're going to look at today, providing an insanely interesting hidden story. And I'm not trying to overhype this up. I watch a lot of ARGs and I've covered a couple on the channel. However, when it comes to what the background plot is, to me this one is the most interesting. And I'm not saying that to downplay any of the other ones, those are fantastic as well, but this one's really got something special going for it. Not only that, um, but if you're like me, and horror subjective, and that's what's so interesting about it, right? Like, what could be scary to you, I may be perfectly fine with, and vice versa. However, I've got this really, like, weird, uncomfortable fear for things within the uncanny valley, specifically things with flipped human features. So for example, things like tall eyes or abnormally wide mouths, just little inhuman details like that always get to me. And don't worry because this series has an abundance of it. I have no idea what I'm gonna do for the thumbnail yet, but I'm legitimately considering just like making it a black title card. That's like, I don't want to scare children on the internet, so click on the video if you wanna see the scary face. Because again, you may look at it and think it's nothing, but I look at it and I have legitimately lost sleep over the series. There's a couple characters and I'll point them out when we get to them that I have like seen as I've been going to sleep, like every time I close my eyes I just think about them, and slept with the lights on for four days after watching this. So needless to say, it did its job. So I've spoken to Alex, who's the creator of the series, and not only is he a fantastic guy, but he helped me out with some of the direction for the presentation of this. Also his Twitter will be linked below, I encourage you to give him a follow. Uh, however, whenever I first messaged him, he was excited uh, to talk to me because he watches the channel, which is really cool. Appreciate it, Alex. But he also, as soon as I messaged him, he's like, yeah, you want me to tell you the whole story of all the secret stuff that's happening? And I said no, because that takes all of the fun out of it. However, something that he did give me was a recommended order to watch this series that may make more sense to a new viewer. So what we're going to do is I'm going to give a straight run through of the plot points, the beats, and the individual scares that happen within each episode, because trust me, there are a lot of them, to make sure that we're all on the same page, and then I'm going to go back through and reveal a lot of the hidden secrets that most people miss on their first viewing. And then we're gonna use all that information, put it together, and I'm going to show you why, in my opinion, this is the best hidden story in analog horror today. But before I get into that, let me get into this, because while it is scarier with the lights off, I need to make sure that I can keep the lights on. So insert, add, to be determined later, right now. And speaking of lights, why don't we do something about these lights? That's better. See, now that summer's over, we can finally get to my favorite time of the year. And if you haven't guessed, that's spooky season. The one time of the year I can do stuff like this and people don't immediately call the police. And today, I'll be honest, I am so excited to tell you about a service that I've been using for the past couple years and they finally said I can do an ad for them. So today I'm here to tell you about Shudder. If you like scary movies and you don't know about Shudder yet, then oh boy are you gonna love this. If you're like me and you go on to Netflix or Hulu or whatever other streaming services, and every now and then you'll find a good horror movie but most of them tend to be the general schlock most audiences go with, Shudder is the Netflix of horror movies. And no, I'm not kidding. The entire site is a lineup of horror films. And whereas most streaming services have their movies laid out by genre, Shudder is so committed to the horror design that it's laid out by subgenres. So you can choose slasher, psychological, demonic, supernatural, whatever. As well as all the other new stuff that they're coming out with exclusive to the platform. For example, Creep Show, which is based off the Stephen King series, is currently on its third season. As well as VHS 94, one of the scariest movie trilogies to come out in the past decade has its fourth installment exclusively on Shudder. And let me tell you, 
it's worth the watch. Currently, Shudder has just kicked off their 61 Days of Halloween, filled with new series and movies exclusive to the platform. Not only that, but with all the new stuff they have coming out that's even taken off of old stuff, like did you know Elvira's still doing stuff on there? Well, now you do. As well as a ton of anthology series coming out soon, documentaries about behind the scenes of your favorite horror movies. I'm telling you, if you appreciate horror, which if you clicked on this video, you probably do, Shudder is the streaming service for you. And just to prove it to you, if you go to the link in the description today at Shudder.com, that's S-H-U-D-D-E-R.com, and use the discount code Windagoon, you will be able to try Shudder for 30 days free. That's right, you can try what is in my opinion the best streaming service out for free for a whole month if you go to Shudder.com, S-H-U-D-D-E-R, Dot com and use discount code Windagoon. Thank you all so much for watching the ad. Thank you so much to Shudder for sponsoring the video. It really does mean a lot, especially from someone that I've used for so long. I hope you enjoy. I hope that you check it out. And we are back to the video. We are going to go ahead and get into the Mandela catalog, but as always, thank you for watching. Caitlin, do not put this in the video. I'm going to go grab a drink. According to Alex, the most cohesive way to understand this story is to start with the second video on the channel titled, Think. We open with a symbol from the United States Department of Temporal Phenomena. We can see beneath the wording that it was established in 1981, and the symbol of the department itself is that of a clock. Even the saying, Tempus Fugit under it means time flies in Latin. Now, again, we're going to get into theories about what this means and how it all connects together in a bit, but I'm just giving you the pieces of the puzzle right now. We start the video and see that it is an informational guide how to deal with something that they call the unforeseen threat known as an alternate. Now, before we get the description of them, it says that if ever encountering an alternate, the best thing to do is to lock your doors, get a gun, run and hide. And in our description of what the creature actually is, it says that some of them can look perfectly identical to specific humans. However, that some of them, as we see that other ones contain wildly inhuman features. It says that the alternate's way of attack is that it performs a method of psychological warfare, and in the diagram we can see that this alternate is speaking redacted text to what appears to be two distressed humans. Now what's interesting is that we're given a lot more of the pieces here than you may think after you finish the series. So for now, keep in mind that these alternates do a form of psychological warfare and can appear to look as a specific person. So we then see what the actual THINK principle itself is. Is. Think is an acronym for what to do if encountering an alternate, which is first step to tell an authority figure, then hinder the alternate's movement, identify the class type, neutralize the alternate, and finally, kill yourself with the message there's not enough room for the two of us. So in order, tell an authority figure, find a way to get away, try to identify the kind that it is if you can, and then if killing it doesn't work, Take out yourself. What's interesting is the message at the end that says there's not enough room for the two of us. This implies a couple things. For one, it's the idea that for an alternate to become an alternate, it has to take over the role of the person that it's trying to mimic. And also, it seems that one of these alternates is speaking to us right now. After that, we see a message that we need to know our place in reality. But not only that, we then move on to a message that says, know your enemy. We are then shown three different classes of these creatures. The first one being that of a doppelganger. This appears to be a perfect copycat of the person that they're trying to mimic. We see something known as detectable, um, I'll get into what that means in a minute, but the only image that we have of it right now is that of Jesus with a very distorted face, and I know that it's Jesus from an episode we're going to get to in just a minute. And then finally, the redacted class type. These things do not look at all like the people they are trying to mimic, and this is an example of that impossible anatomy that was mentioned earlier. We see three examples of what this redacted class type looks like before we get the final shot of the video, which is one of them standing in someone's bedroom corner. So we now know that there's three different types of these creatures that are attacking everyone. 
The doppelganger and the redacted are the ones we'll look at right now. The detectable is its own thing I'll talk about in a minute. So we see that some of them are these impossibly shaped creatures that can be in someone's house, as well as another kind that is a perfect copy of an individual. Keep all these pieces together right now. There's two different kinds, at least two different main kinds. They mimic and they do acts of psychological warfare. With that in mind, let's move on to the next episode. After this, we'll move on to the third video on the channel, which Alex recommended to me as being the second one in the watch order, and that is Mandela Catalog Volume 1. The beginning of this is exactly like the beginning of the Think video. However, it seems like early into it, whoever is watching through the VCR player ejects the video and starts up a new one. This doesn't necessarily relate to the story of it altogether, but at least not yet it doesn't, but it seems that someone is watching all of these videos in the order that we're seeing them. So maybe whoever's watching this tape is trying to find out more information about what these alternates do. So after the section of the Think video is over, we then see a picture of two different guys who are initially identified as Victim 1 and Victim 2 before their names change to Mark Heathcliff and Caesar Taurus. We hear a phone conversation between the two where Caesar says that he's taking his mom to the hospital. What happens is Caesar says that he heard his mom scream, she took a bad fall, so now he's driving her to the hospital and needs Mark to turn on the cameras in the house. Now this is weird, right? If your mom collapsed and you were driving her to the hospital, your first concern wouldn't be to call your friend to have him come over and turn on a bunch of security cameras. This implies that whatever's going on with these alternates, maybe people don't know the specifics of how it works, but they know that something's going on and the news is telling them that something's going on. The conversation continues until Caesar says the phrase, try to get a good view of the back hallway before the video immediately distorts and Caesar's face morphs into this. In my opinion, watching it in this order, this is the first real scare of the series, um, but don't worry, it'll get worse. So we then follow a recording from Mark's dash cam as he drives over to Caesar's house. We then flip through all the cameras that are turned on within Caesar's house before we see the message come on the screen that there was motion detected at 3 a.m. Also, this is kind of a side note from the story itself, but Alex has done an excellent job at setting up tension to this point, and I didn't say this earlier enough, let me say this now. If this sounds even remotely interesting to you, it's the link right after the ad in the description. Go to it, watch it, I do not want to spoil the horror of this series for you by describing it before you get to experience it firsthand, so go do that. But Alex really is great at setting up tension because as these cameras were flipping, I was on the edge of my seat. No clue what was going to happen, but just ready for anything. After that, we then see another message come across the screen at 5.30am that says there was a noise detected. We then hear a woman scream the phrase, who are you? Get away from me. And then we have another jump cut to the faces of Mark and Caesar as they're twisted and pulled into this and then just two standalone eyes in the darkness. Now, because there's only been one woman mentioned in the series so far, that being Caesar's mother, I'm going to imagine this is her. Not only that, but Caesar's mention to Mark to turn on the cameras in the back hallway implies that that's either where he found her or where he heard the scream from. So I think what we're hearing is the last interaction that she had before she was attacked by whatever this thing is. And then at the final shot of the house, we see that the door is wide open. We then get the message, it followed me home, Caesar, before we cut to a shot of a wooden door in someone's bedroom with this sound playing of someone trying to get in. Now considering the sentence was, it followed me home Caesar, and then from evidence we'll see in a second, this is Mark who has just left Caesar's house. And now whatever followed Mark home from Caesar's house is outside of his bedroom door, trying to convince him to come out. We then get this message, again from Mark, that says, I do not want to see what is on the other side, but it has been days and nobody has come to help me. We then hear audio of Mark hearing laughing coming from within his house before he screams and then fires a gun. We then see the phrase on the screen, uh-oh, bad decision, Mark. 
before we hear footsteps running to the camera and this face appears on screen. We then see this shot of Mark's partially censored body lying on the bed as a dial tone plays, with the text saying, nobody came for me. All right, so some stuff to take away from this clip is after Mark went to Caesar's house to turn on the cameras, it seems, as he said, that something followed him home. And then after days of it tormenting him over and over, Mark shot himself because, as he said, no one came for me. So to raise a couple hypothetical questions that I'm going to answer in a second. For one, how on earth did Caesar survive if whatever this thing is attacked his mom and then whenever Mark comes, it immediately follows him home. And also, why if he attempted to call the police and was in there for days, did no one come to help him? Well, we'll get an answer to that second one right now. In the next tape on this episode, we are now viewing the Mandela County Police training video with the warning message that we should definitely not watch this at any case if we ourselves are not part of the police force. We also see that this is specifically for 911 call operators. A creepy voice gives us the basic rundown where it explains to us what to do in the case of police, fire, and medical emergencies, which all of them are just called the police, fire, or medical departments. So yeah. <laughs> Before we get a secret fourth option that can occur, and that is an encounter. To which it specifically says, and remember, this is for anyone who is a call operator in Mandela County, do not help a caller reporting an alternate encounter. So, for one, that explains why no one came to help Mark, because they're specifically told that they can't help them. But why? It then follows up and says, no matter how frantic their screams are, and that they should lie to the caller and say that help is on the way. It then goes on to say, do not speak too much, you might accidentally reveal your fear. Before the line, nothing is worth the risk is repeated over and over. So initially you may watch this part where it says that the police shouldn't help anyone who's dealing with an alternate and think that they're in on it. However, that last sentence makes me think otherwise. The part where it says, do not talk too much, you might accidentally reveal your fear. If the police were for some reason in on this, why would they be afraid to reveal their fear to this person who's about to be a victim of an alternate attack? Or alternatively, what if they don't want the alternate to know what they fear? Hence the phrase that follows afterwards, nothing is worth the risk. We then move on to the final tape within this video, which is titled Toddler Stress Assessment, where the idea is you are supposed to record your child's response to various media. It starts out normally as most of these horrific tapes do, but then we see the message, Daddy didn't tuck me in, and there is a man in the closet. After this, we then see a book that a kid has wrote, and that kid's name is Mark, and he wrote it when he was only four years old. Now, it is a common rule in storytelling that if you have two characters never name them the same thing ever that's just mean because we already have mark heathcliff from the tape that i talked about a minute ago and now we have a different mark so it can be safely assumed that these two are the same person and as a matter of fact that's something i confirmed with alex to make sure he wasn't being a jerk so this is the same mark who would one day have an alternate within his house and resort to suicide to get away from it the book is titled the scary night and it goes as such daddy didn't check under my bed last night so i went to mommy's room i was scared there was scary knocking at the door and the scariest part is walking by the dark room by the stairs. We then see a diagram of this dark room by the stairs that Mark's referring to. Almost at mommy's room, then I saw the man in the corner, and then I fell asleep the end, with this being the diagram of the man in the corner. And then finally, in the second section of this video, it then says we're supposed to record our child's reaction to visual stimuli, and after some normal images of cats and balloons and white people and all that stuff, we then see an image of this dark room by the staircase that Mark was referring to, and then finally we see this, with the message next to it indicating that this is an intruder. And that's the end of Mandela Catalog Volume 1. Alright, so that final module connects a lot of the ideas of what we've got so far. So whatever this intruder was, the man in the closet that Mark saw as a child, 
it behaves very differently from the mimics or the alternates that we've seen up until this point. See, according to Mark, this thing was an element of his childhood. It wasn't just a one-time occurrence, it was the man in the dark room. And at the end of the video, he specifically referred to as an intruder. This is very similar to the alternates that we saw at the end of the first video, the Think video that was standing in the corner. Once again, a man in a corner. However, the behavior was totally different, and that's something I'll address in a bit. Now, while I may be jumping the gun a little bit, and this may get more into the theory side I'm going to talk about at the end, I want to mention this right now while it's fresh on your mind. The thing I mentioned earlier, the other hypothetical question of how wasn't Caesar killed by whatever this thing is? Well, if you'll remember how doppelgangers work, they are a perfect copy of the person that they want to mimic. And at the beginning of the video, we see Mark and Caesar both labeled as victims. However, we don't see anything happen to Caesar within this video. So what if Caesar was already a doppelganger at the time he called Mark? Because think about it, if one of these things was in Caesar's house and it attacked his mother and potentially killed her, then how was Caesar able to just walk back there, put her in her car and drive to the hospital? It would also explain why he was so eager to get Mark to come over to his house and especially for him to go into the back hallway. Not only that, but whenever we hear the scream of the mother at that portion in the video and their faces distort, it's Caesar's face who distorts into the two-eyed figure. This would imply that the creature that attacked her was the mimic of her own son, Caesar. So I think that Caesar was already dead and his doppelganger lured Mark over to the house so that he could be killed as well, or in this case, kill himself. Now, we're gonna get more into why they're doing this and particularly how they're doing this in a minute, but now we need to go to what is, in my opinion, the most terrifying episode of the entire series. And it's the first episode on the channel, Overthrown. Also, we're going to get sacrilegious here. Um, if you have a problem with that, I'm sorry. <laughs> Overthrown is the first video on the channel and the third in the recommended watch order. It opens up with what appears to be a children's television special of the biblical Christmas story. It starts out normally with Gabriel telling the shepherds that Jesus has been born in the city in Bethlehem before the screen distorts and then nothing is normal or okay after this. We hear a broken voice describing the cities in Bethlehem in which Jesus was born before it talks about the moment in which the angel came to Mary to tell her that he was going to be the mother of Christ. However, this time it says that the angel's name is redacted. Now it's easier if I talk you through this as we go through this episode because it'll make more sense at the end of it. So so it seems that what's happened is Gabriel, who we saw in the first scene, whenever that screen was distorted, they were replaced, and now we have this new angel who, again, the name is redacted. Whenever the angel comes down to Mary, we get this horrific glitch that comes up on screen. I also want to mention that I thought you all were hyping Mandela Catalog up a little bit too much, and remember, this is the first episode on the channel. So, like, I'm like, alright, what is this, another ARG? I've seen 8 million of these. I'm tough. So I turn it on at night by myself, and it's that. <laughs> and, like, I, I saw the face and the heard the glitch noise and all that, and was mortified, and I hate all of you. Anyway, so after we see this broken face, a black square covers it up, similar to the black square that covered up Mark's head after his suicide. After Mary speaks to this redacted angel, we then hear the angel say something that's completely unintelligible. Now, I know that there's hidden messages within the captions of this video, however, I want to save that for the end analysis. We then see Joseph sleeping in his bed as this redacted angel comes to the window and says that he will know the shepherd's fear and that he will trick the shepherds before repeating wake up Joseph over and over. We then get an alternate scene of the opening wherever Gabriel came to the angels, only this time it's our new redacted or fake angel. Remember, the way that these doppelgangers work is they replace someone and take on their identity. So we now have this figure, which is the body of Jesus Christ with another blacked out box over the head, before he says to the shepherds, I know what makes you human, I know what you love and what you dread, before his face glitches and this happens. Oh. 
Now, it may just be the fact that I'm a Christian and have been raised in church all my life and stuff like that, and the fact that little uncanny stuff gets me, but the combination between the distorted music and the face and everything put together absolutely destroyed me for a while. Like I said that whenever I've been going to sleep I keep seeing this face over and over. It's this face. And what's funny is a couple of you are probably looking at like that's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. And you know what? I'm glad. I'm glad that you're tough and I'm glad you're that cool and I'm glad that you're going to be able to sleep tonight because I won't. We then see a text in red across the sky that says, Can't you see? I deceive them. Such weak minds. Before the text color shifts to white and we see this message. I am bound to chains on my ankles that grow heavier with every step. The infinite amount of sand will be my tomb, and my foolishness will be my legacy. If there is a god, please help me." Now, um, there's certainly a lot to break down there, and I could do that now, or I could make you wait for the end of it, and I think I'm going to make you wait for the end of it. The reason being, and I promise, it's going to make a lot more sense when I talk about all of this at once. So for now, let's move on to the next one, Intruder Alert. Intruder Alert is the fourth video and the fourth one in this watch order. It opens up with the charming message with this guy's face that says, I am inside your home. Lovely. We then switch to another message from Mandela County, from the Mandela County Child Endangerment Awareness Association. What they're doing is showing an educational video to teach parents how to properly keep an eye on their children. We then see a television set that has normal things on it initially, but then right before a cut we have a fade in of the face that we saw at the beginning of the video. We then see that we are to be careful about the TV before the message is quickly typed in that they exist on different spectrums. So we obviously see that whatever these creatures are, and the fact that the name of this episode is titled Intruder Alert and the opening face said, I am inside your home, we can assume that whatever this face is, it's part of this mimic or alternate thing that's going on in Mandela County. And for whatever reason, they are now capable of using television sets. We then see the message that if your child is screaming, you should wait for your child to stop making noise. Which is definitely some parent of the year advice, if any. Before it shows a diagram of a mother walking into the room to see her child, that the cradle is empty, and then that face again on the TV. We then get the slow diagram as it shows the woman hanging herself with the message distraught at the sight of her missing infant. So it seems that what happened, this face, or this alternate, came through the TV, by some means took the child, and as the message said, distraught at the sight of her missing infant, the woman hung herself. This is the second time in the series we've seen someone commit suicide over what these alternates do. We then flip over to the Mandela County Emergency Alert System that says across four counties there has been 3,426 missing children. I don't even know how this is just a Mandela County problem anymore. Like if that many kids went missing, wouldn't like the military or Batman or someone get involved? We get the important details about the TV immediately after, as the message then says to keep kids away from the TV and anything that can produce frightening imagery. We then cut over to what is a Mandela County police investigation of a suicide. It says after they heard the child crying and a crack, they could not find their child to which the mother then committed suicide. We can only assume that this is the diagram we saw a moment ago. The investigator goes, takes this one image of the house, and has an incredibly dreadful feeling before leaving. One of the officers decided to go inside and set up a camera outside of the room in which the suicide occurred. For some reason, none of the police want to go within the room itself. This is the order of images that we see from the camera that the officer set up. Initially it's nothing, before the entire room is shadowed, followed by a shadow with eyes eerily similar to that of Caesar's in the previous video. We see a face which is identical to the face we have seen in the television up until this point, before we get this horrific shot of a redacted black square on the staircase with the message, Victim's Corpse is seen being tampered with by Invisible Source. My favorite part about this, and this made me crack up watching it initially, for all of the pictures, it has in the bottom right the current threat level, like threat level none, threat level minimal, whatever, 
And for here, whenever it says that an invisible force is messing with the corpse, it says threat level evident. Like, yeah, you don't say. We then get a message from the police saying that the suspect is completely unidentifiable. However, the police have ruled out the chance of this being an alternate. Now, this is interesting for a couple reasons. For one, alternate's the only thing that we've really known about up until this point, but also the fact that the police are aware enough about them that they can do things like rule them out in this supernatural case. <laughs> Remember how in the first video we watched it was explained that there are three different types of these creatures? Again, excluding the Jesus that we saw in the last one because I want to talk about it as little as possible, but specifically that of the doppelganger and the redacted kind? Well, remember that whole detail that they partake in forms of psychological warfare and the message that we get in this video where it says that they exist on different spectrums well here's the initial setup to my theory for how this works and I'll qualify it with more stuff we're gonna see in a minute I believe that the doppelgangers or alternates are a separate creature from the redacted type which we now see called an intruder think about it this way these things want to get to the point in which they can completely take on the physical form of a person. If I'm correct about Caesar being one of the alternates, then that's his final stage, and his next point wasn't to kill Mark, it was to have another one follow him home. So the final end goal that these things want to be at is to take over a human life. But we see some of them don't operate that way. Like for example, the one that followed Mark home, and now the one that's here in this house. Instead, both of them operated through fear. Remember that message whenever it was explaining to police call operators why they're never supposed to send anyone to help someone who's had an alternate encounter? Do you remember the message that said do not talk too much because they may find out what you're afraid of? I think what happens is these redacteds, which from here on out I'm going to refer to as intruders, I believe that these intruders, as it's mentioned, exist on different spectrums and cannot directly interact with people. So the way that they operate is they figure out what someone fears. This is also something that the, I'm going to consider for now, alternate Jesus mentioned in Overthrown when he said that he will know what the shepherds fear. So these creatures, this whole cluster, all different three types that we've seen so far that have been referred to as alternates, all use fear as a means of getting to people. And the reason that they do that is to make people commit suicide. See what happened with Mark. This creature followed him home and tormented him for days on end until Mark couldn't take it anymore. And then whenever he does take the shot, the message that comes on screen says, uh-oh, bad decision, Mark. Before we see that creature run up to the camera and supposedly put his face in it. As if this creature has been waiting on the edge of his seat for the opportunity for Mark to kill himself. And then what do we see here in this tape? We see that whatever this face is, whatever this thing on another spectrum is, the intruder has come through the television and stole this mother's baby, and as it says, at the sight of her missing infant, killed herself. But not only that, a few hours later, while the police are there investigating, they see an invisible force move and alter the corpse before it disappears and the police specifically ruled out the chance of this being an alternate. The way I believe it works is whatever these creatures are, they start out as intruders, and the way that they work is they are on different spectrums and therefore cannot directly interact with people, but what they can get them to do is kill themselves. And then from there, they can possess the corpse that is now left behind, becoming an alternate. So the story that that would mean thus far is that the first victim of all of this had to be Caesar. He committed suicide, one of the intruders took over his body and became an alternate, to which now he's in his physical form and could do something like just murder his mother, or Caesar's mother. So now, this alternate's goal isn't to just murder Mark, but to have him be a vessel for another intruder. To which the intruder carries out that whole thing and we can imagine takes over Mark's body. That would also explain why the police were able to rule out an alternate, because this isn't an alternate's M.O. So while the police seem to be privy on this, between things like they know what alternates are, and they know to not let the alternate at the end of a phone of someone having an encounter 
figure out what the call operator fears, but they're not perfect because they're not exactly sure how the intruders work yet. To drive my point home, let's get on to the final video of the series up until this moment, metaphysical awareness disorder. You see in this educational video that metaphysical awareness disorder, also referred to as MAD, has had a 95% increase in recent cases. In the demonstration of how it works, we see something fade into existence, say something unintelligible to a person, and then leaving. It says that MAD is exposure to verbal information that is not desired to be known, and that in 97% of cases, it results in the person's suicide. This is exactly what I was referring to. Whatever these creatures are, they can fade into existence and they have this forbidden knowledge, or as it says here, information that is not desired to be known. And they are so effective at this that 97% of people exposed to it commit suicide. So this would be the intruders appearing before people, delivering their message, causing a suicide so that they can harvest the body. So then it talks about ways to avoid MAD, and it says some interesting stuff. It first says to avoid religious beliefs and philosophical practices. We then get the horrifying message that if you're falling asleep and you think its eyes are in your face, do not open your eyes, it's watching. Which is the horrifying idea that if one of these intruders are in your house and you're falling asleep it could be right in front of your face staring at you so don't open your eyes <laughs> this in combination with the jesus face i showed earlier has been horrific to my well-being and alex i hate you and love you so much at the same time now before i get into a final analysis with this I need to mention just one more little thing that also backs up my point. If you go over to Playlist on the Mandela Catalog channel, you'll see something called Original Copies. Now from my understanding, this is quite literally the first Mandela Catalog Volume 1 video, just in its original edits before he came out with the final version. However, there are a couple details that back up what I'm saying. Whenever dealing with the section about Mark going to Caesar's house, there is a mention of the line, We're in your house. Now why this matters is because, remember in my theory, it's not just one alternate doing this, it is an intruder becoming an alternate and then making Mark come over in order to provide a host for another intruder to do the same thing. So we're in your house implying more than one backs that up. Also, the final scene of Mark's suicide is slightly altered and we get a message at the end, I have a gift for you and now I'm free. Again, if these intruders are confined to other planes of existence until they have a body to take over, Mark's suicide was a means of this creature becoming free. All right, so we've gone through it. Pat yourself on the back. You were very brave and I'm proud of you. And while at this point, I'm pretty confident in my theory that this is how alternates behave and the way that they act, we still don't know what they are. At least not yet you don't. If you'll remember, in the Overthrown video, there was a couple of hidden messages that I didn't get to yet, but let's get to them now. There are two hidden messages in Overthrown. The first, as mentioned earlier, is whenever the redacted or false angel speaks to Mary. If you have your captions turned on, you can see there is a message there in binary. If you translate that binary, which thank you to Kiko, who's currently the top comment on that video for doing the translation, which if you translate that binary, you get the message, I am the one true savior. I must reverse the delusion. Joseph is next. For one, the Joseph is next part lines up because the next thing that we see is this same fake angel outside of Joseph's window talking to him. However, that line, I am the one true savior is what's interesting because at the end of the video, we see something that looks like Jesus until the face morphs. But here we see that whatever that is, is wanting to take his place. However, it's the second hidden message that for me really does it. After the horrifying scene that shook me to my core that I talked about a minute ago, there is a brief cut before we see text on the screen where we just hear heavy breathing as if someone's distressed or scared. And then if you have your subtitles turned on, you will see this message. How frozen I became and powerless then. Ask it not reader, for I write it not. Because all language would be insufficient. I did not die and I alive remain not. Think for thyself now, 
Hast thou ought to wit what I became, being of both deprived? What I just read to you is from the 35th canto of Dante's Inferno, which... <clears throat> Dante's Inferno is a story of a character Dante and his journey through hell. What I just read is the passage that Dante says whenever he comes face to face with the devil. So think about how this is framed. We have this creature that is wanting to replace Jesus. He is essentially rewriting history for what we see. And then after we finally see him, we get the passage from Dante's Inferno whenever the man views Satan himself. I believe that what we're seeing, and I believe the entire story of the Mandela Catalog, is that Lucifer overthrew Jesus whenever Jesus came to Earth, and now history is played out not at the rule of Christ, but at the rule of demons. See, all of the lines that we've seen so far in Overthrown is of this fake angel, or Lucifer as I'm going to call him from now on, saying that he can be the one true savior, that he just has to deceive everyone, and his mentions that he will make them no fear. So now, looking at the text in red, and let's assume that's Lucifer at the end of Overthrown, it says, Can't you see, I deceive them, such weak minds? Referring to the fact that Lucifer has taken the place of God in these people's eyes. So then because of that, I believe the text in white that follows is the now Overthrown Jesus, as the title implies. I'm getting like goosebumps talking about this right now, because as you can imagine, this is a little touchy for me, but the fact that I'm so freaked out about it is why I think the series is so good, because it genuinely is getting to me. I think this final text at the end of the video, where it talks about being bound and being stuck in infinite sand, before the lines, if there is a God, please help me, is the now human Jesus cursed to forever walk the earth because Lucifer kicked him out of his role in eternity. And also, if you think that I'm introducing religious ideas into this story, the first video on the channel is of the nativity story and the birth of Jesus. So I, I didn't do it, he did it first. So what does that mean for all these alternates and intruders that we've seen? I believe that these are demons priming their takeover of Earth. Think about this way, these demons, as it says, exist on different planes. They're not allowed to cross the barrier over into our world. However, if they have forbidden knowledge and if they can convince someone to kill themselves, they can then possess their corpse in a quite more literal possession than what we've talked about up until now. And then from there, they can not only manipulate humanity, but they can get more people to be the host for these other demons. That's why up until this point, I've neglected considering the detectable of the three different kinds with the whole doppelganger and redacted thing, because I believe that both the intruder or redacted is just an early form of the doppelganger or alternate. Whereas Lucifer, also shown as the detectable, is very different than the other path of demons that we've seen so far. Also, this is a bit more of a side note, it's not as important to the overall theory of the story. However, if you've watched my Dante's Inferno video, which, no pressure, but link in the description if you want to. In that story, it's mentioned that if someone commits suicide, they go directly to hell, regardless of how they lived. And the fact that earlier in this story, we saw a direct reference to Dante's Inferno, perhaps it's not only for the purpose of having a vessel to take over, while that may be the primary purpose, but also the fact that it's growing the number of souls in hell as they do it. So why now, right? If all the way back at like year zero, Lucifer was able to take over the role of God to people on Earth, then why wait so long? Well, once again, as mentioned earlier, these intruders find a way to make someone so afraid that they kill themselves, which would be a very hard and slow process if done on an individual basis for hundreds and hundreds of years. However, with the new invention of television, it's really easy to make a mass amount of people afraid all at once. Remember how there was a message during the child safety time where it said that do not let your children around a television or anything else that can cause frightening imagery? Well, while these things are still in a different dimension and can't directly harm you, they're putting out messages through television, they're whispering to people, they're talking to people, and all of that. Because of that, I'm going to make the further theory off of this theory I'm already building that initially, one of the intruders has to find a way into the home. Like for example, if everything was as easy as Mark and they could just find people and then torment them until they kill themselves, they would just do that. However, remember Mark 
had to come to Caesar's house for it to latch on to him. So what most likely happens is they torment people through whispers and through televisions and everything else and then whenever someone kills himself as we saw with the woman in the child care story they can then come in and inhabit that body and also open up a gateway for more intruders to come into our world or at least come into our world to the point that they can do something like follow mark back to his house so if someone makes a gateway for an alternate to be formed that alternate can make a gateway for intruders also remember that concept at the end of the mad video where it said that in order to not develop mad, one of the things you should do is stay away from religion. Well, that's because religion is entirely different than as we understand it today, because 2000 years ago, Satan became the root of the religious movement, or at least the Christianity movement. And also remember how in mad, it said one of the ways to avoid developing mad was to avoid religion itself. Well, that's because 2000 years ago, instead of Jesus becoming the root version of Christianity, it was instead Lucifer. So everything since then has been tainted. That's also the second mention of religion directly within this series. So again, you can't say I brought devil stuff into this. It was already there. So as a short TLDR of the entire thing, Lucifer overthrew Jesus some time ago and has now slowly been building up an army of demons on Earth. The demons use fear to subtly manipulate people and through modern electricity and things like analog horror itself have a means of making people afraid on a mass scale. I just realized this is like true definitive analog horror because even the creatures within the story are using the analog format in order to make people horrified. Huh. But through modern electricity are causing fear on a mass scale and doing things like abducting a lot of children at once in order to make that fear go further. And then finally, whenever someone kills himself and that intruder is allowed to become an alternate by possessing that body, that alternate then opens the gateway for more intruders to inhabit our world. And if you come into contact with an intruder, you're stuck and it's going to torment you forever until it gets what it wants. This is what we saw happen with Mark. This is why police do not respond to phone calls of intruder encounters. And this is why 97% of people who develop mad commit suicide. It seems as if the police are the only ones who really know what's going on in this world. At least they have some sort of idea because they understand concepts of things like alternates even if they don't get how intruders work. But on the wide scale, because it's still reported on things like local news networks, I think that we're seeing the early stages of this demonic takeover. However, my theory isn't perfect, right? And it still doesn't get to all of the questions. Like, for example, if these creatures exist solely in the spiritual plane, how can they do things like abduct children? Then is there a way to permanently stop these things? We see in the early videos that it recommends that you shoot it or try to neutralize it. Does that actually work and is this something that the police have done? Or is this just to make you feel better about yourself? And then finally, and at the moment, the most pressing question to me, we still don't know what this was. Think about it. All the other alternates are actively trying to get the process going as fast as they can. However, when Mark was just a kid, this thing was just in his closet and in the dark room by the stairs. It just kind of lived there. This is entirely different from any of the behavior that we've seen out of the intruders or the alternates. As a matter of fact, I was racking my brain so hard trying to figure out what this was that I messaged Alex and said, am I going crazy? Is this just like a lazy intruder or what? And he says, that's something particularly horrifying that's going to be revealed in the next few episodes. So whatever this creature is that just kind of existed around Mark, and then remember that decades later, Mark will eventually lose his life to one of these intruders and most likely become an alternate, or at least his body will become an alternate and he will not be present for that. And there's a lot of questions that we've yet to see, but I guarantee you are on the way. To be completely honest with you, this is one of the most excited I've been for a YouTube series in a long time. I talked to Alex and without spoiling everything for me, which I appreciate, he told me that he has had this entire thing planned out from the beginning, which means he has a clear vision for where it's going to go and what's going to be introduced. And right now he's still building the puzzle. So all of my theories, while I stand by them, and that's going to be the mindset that I have watching the show as it continues, 
that doesn't mean that it can't be changed or it doesn't mean that I can't be wrong, but I definitely think we haven't seen all of it yet and that there's going to be more pieces that are either going to make this more complicated or add entirely new layers to it. And I talked to Alex and he's working hard to get new episodes out as fast as possible. As a matter of fact, while I was sitting down to record this, he posted a teaser for the next episode on his Patreon and I'm so scared already <laughs> and i may have not captured it as well in this video but it's not only a cool story in my opinion but it is an excellent example of analog horror and like i said one of the best so i cannot stress this enough to you i've got the mandela catalog youtube channel patreon and alex's twitter all links below right beneath the ad and if you want to support him on patreon or twitter that would be awesome but i'm telling you you've got to sub to that youtube channel because I want stuff like this to get attention because when it comes to art, especially in something like the horror community, where in my opinion, a lot of it's been kind of dragged out and bland for a while, giving good art attention makes competitive art more competitive. Or in other words, if things that are good do really well, then there will be more encouragement from not just other YouTubers, but from people who do things like make horror movies, there will be more competition to be scarier and to be better. and. I definitely think that as of at this moment, if I was to go to Hollywood execs and they were to say, well, what's YouTube got that's so great with horror, I would slide them the Mandela catalog. Because for me, this really is the nail biter that I feel like he was going for. And I think he knocked it out of the park. So I, I've raised him enough. Check him out. You need to go to the channel, watch it for yourself. It is worth your time. And if you've made it this far into the video, I'm glad that you thought I was also worth your time, and I greatly appreciate it, and thank you for watching. I love analog horror. I love, like, ARGs. Also, that's some. if you're still here, you get these little Easter eggs. Alex also mentioned that he is planning to add ARG elements into the series as it continues, and this is also the interesting part. He didn't tell me this, but I get the idea that if we've seen one season of it, he was describing kind of the roadmap for how big it'll be and adding ARG elements. We've got at least another two seasons, I feel. Probably more. Um, but, like, his creativity's fantastic. Where he's taking the series is fantastic. I'm so excited. And one of the reasons I wanted to do... And this is also just another cool side note. He, um, he was very thankful, which I, you don't need to be, but he was very kind to me. Um, saying that he was glad I was going to make this video on the channel whenever I told him because he was introduced to Gemini Home Entertainment from my video and he said that that was like his inspiration to uh, or part of his inspiration uh, to keep going and get it on with the Mandela catalog which is really cool to me um, also this I'll, I'm gonna throw this in as a hidden Easter egg if you've watched this long in the video this is a fun fact so the face um, of the the one that we don't know yet, the one at the end that I was like, we don't know what this is, the thing that was in Mark's closet when he was four. Uh, I had asked him where he got all the faces from because I was looking up the original faces, trying to see if there's some correlation. And the other faces, the face that was on the TV and the face that runs up to the camera after Mark commits suicide, both of those are police sketches, which is terrifying in their own right. Um, but there was the one of the, the guy in the hoodie, and I believe that one's also a police sketch, but he says he got it from my Conspiracy Iceberg series, because he watches the Conspiracy videos, and it was for the Despair Code, I, whoop, hit the table, it was for the Despair Code, I believe, that was the image that was used, because that's just what people on 4chan associate the Despair Code with, and he saw that and then put it in. I was like, that is so cool, it's so wild to me that this creepy face that I hope is going to be a part of a huge, like, you know, online horror series, he pulled the face from one of my videos. That's so cool, that makes my heart so happy, <laughs> and uh, that was just so neat uh, for me to talk about. And th that I get the privilege to talk about it to you all. Um, and thank you all for letting me do that. Thank you to Alex for this amazing series. I'm stoked that it's out there and I want to see it do better. And I want to see more people watching it because he deserves the praise. So again, links in the description. Um, thank you all for watching at this point. I mentioned this on Twitter. Um, but if you ordered one of the t-shirts, I'm sorry that they've been delayed up until this point. 
Um, the way it works is they're through Printify is how they're made. And the manufacturers of them, I believe, are going through COVID complications right now. Uh, in other words, between like, you know, different mandates and restrictions and all that, they're having trouble getting production going. And I think some producers have just shut down entirely. Um, however, a couple days ago, the first shirts started getting shipped for like the first time in a few weeks. So I think things are getting back in gear. But if you have been so patient with those and if you've been waiting, I really do appreciate it. And it means a lot. Um, so thank you for your time. Of course, you can always request a refund on Printify, and I totally understand. I'm sorry that you don't have your shirts yet, but I appreciate the support, and I appreciate your patience. Um, and it, it really means a lot. I know I know it's not optimal, because like the way it works on my end is I go through a middleman for the shop, and then I get a third party to make the shirts. And I know it's not optimal, but it's the best that I can do right now. Um, maybe in the future that'll change, but thank you for your patience. Um, Thank you, especially not for not only everyone who's watching, but everyone who subscribed. We are at what was it, six hundred sixty thousand? <laughs> it, it's like it's so weird to me because one person will see me in public and be like, "I sub to your channel," and that's so cool to me. It's like, oh my gosh, someone thinks I'm cool enough to like maybe not cool enough. Someone <laughs> spent waste enough of their time here listening to me talk that they decided to subscribe to my channel. So whenever I see like, oh, I got 20,000 in a week, that just doesn't compute. It just passes through my brain. Um, but you guys have been fantastic. It's really more than I deserve and I appreciate it. So thank you all for that. Uh, thank you so much to my patrons, as you can see over here. Thank you to my top tier patrons uh, whose names are listed. You, I say this every video and you guys know it. You support me, you get me here. You're the reason I'm able to do this full time and you're the reason I'm able to do things. Like show you great horror series that I find to get more attention and I couldn't do it without you guys, and thank you so much. Um, it's still spooky month. There will be more spookiness uh, to be had for it. I've at least got two more spooky videos on the way. Maybe more, we'll find out. Um, but happy spook month, uh, Halloween, creepy time, whatever. And I appreciate you watching. So thank you all so much. I hope that you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one.